Hello, uh, my name is Matt Johnson. Um, I'm a member of the Green Group at MIT, um, and I'm the technical lead for the Reaction Mechanism Generator Organization. Um, and today I'm going to be presenting on uh, simulating chemical kinetics with Reaction Mechanism Simulator, or RMS. First, we're going to talk about what is a chemical mechanism and why would you want to simulate one. Um, then we'll talk a little bit about what is RMS, um, we'll give a short introduction to RMS, and then also uh, show some comparisons with similar software, um, talk a little about, a bit about unique features, and also talk about how we were able to do this. So first, what is a chemical mechanism and why would you want to simulate one? So chemical reactions are ubiquitous in our daily lives and in nature. Um, redox chemistry, generating electricity and batteries, um, pharmaceuticals, um, polymeric coatings on desks, on uh, water bottles, um, combustion in a car engine. And as you can imagine, it's very important to be able to model all of these processes. And so first, what is a chemical mechanism? So most of these chemical reactions, while you might see them written as one one single step take place really as a series or network of elementary steps. Um, these elementary reactions usually obey mass action kinetics. Um, if you have, say, some two reactants, A and B, reacting to form in the forward direction to form C plus D, you'll also have a reverse reaction of C plus D reacting to form A plus B. And the flux component of this reaction, just the bit associated with A, will look like this, where you have this forward rate coefficient times the concentrations of the product of the concentrations of the reactants, and then a reverse rate coefficient times the product of the rate coefficients of the products, and then you multiply by V um, to get in, unit, in these units. Now, we will usually obtain this reverse rate coefficient using thermochemical parameters for the species. Um, where we'll have special, specific thermochemical parameters for each of these species that let us calculate these Gibbs energies, um, which essentially allows us to relate Kr to K forward. Um, while we're talking about reactions here um, and what the, these kinetics look like, it's worth noting that unimolecular chemical reactions can occur, occur on time scales as fast as 10 to the 13 seconds inverse, and they can also be arbitrarily slow. And what this means is, is that often in these chemical kinetic mechanisms, you'll have um, some time, you'll have a wide variety of time scales, um, which tends to result in these systems having a lot of stiffness. So essentially, um, what we've gotten to here, a chemical mechanism is a list of chemical species like this one, with thermochemical parameters for each of these species like these. Um, this is an example of an RMS input file. And then also a list of elementary chemical reactions. Here we've defined our products, our reactants, and then a forward rate coefficient for each reaction um, with this format here. So now what does this mechanism simulation look like? So in addition to these chemical species we're tracking, we also care about thermodynamic state variables. Temperature, pressure, volume, and sometimes potential can all be changed as a result of chemical reactions. And these may be tracked or held constant depending on the definition of the reaction domain. Um, you might also want to simulate interactions between multiple phases, domains, such as heat transfer, diffusion, flow, vaporization, condensation, and interfacial reactions. So when we put all of this together, we get a system of ODEs or DAEs, um, typically 10 to 10,000 species, um, usually nonlinear usually moderately to very stiff. And for larger mechanisms in particular, the Jacobian is very sparse, although it's usually not structured. Um, also, the number of parameters tends to be much larger than the, the number of variables, um, which is important when you talk about sensitivity analysis, as we will be later. So now let's talk a little bit about what exactly is RMS. So RMS is a code for simulating these mass action kinetic mechanism, chemical kinetic mechanisms. Um, it allows for multi-domain multi simulations, and it's intended to support the simulation of combustion, pyrolysis, liquid oxidation, electrochemistry, heterogeneous catalysis, other liquid chemistries, polymers, and atmospheric chemistry, with a special focus given to 
modern numerical methods, model analysis, and also in, in particular um, larger mechanisms in general, although it can do smaller just as well. RMS has already been used in many different applications. Um, we used it to model uh, combustion systems and ignition quality testers, rapid compression machines, shock tubes, flow tubes. We've also used it to model pharmaceutical degradation, um, polymer film growth, gas phase catalysis, electrocatalytic reduction of nitrogen to ammonia, solid electrolyte interfaces and batteries, liquid oxidation, and pyrolysis of heavy oils. So let, now let's go through a little introduction to the code. I've already run, uh, done a basic run through to speed things along a little bit, but we import differential equations uh, for solving the ODEs, um, reaction mechanism simulator, and then also pi plot for plotting. So we have these. And then first we load an input file. Um, so this is an RMS input file, um, but we also this will this function will also accept a Chemkin input file, which is much more common. Um, we load this into a phase dictionary, um, which is largely of this format of where for each phase it has the species and reactions. And as you can see here, we pull out the gas phase species and reactions, the surface phase species and reactions. And then also we do a little bit different thing for these interface reactions, which include involve species that are on both the gas, involve species that are in the gas and species that are in the surface. And for these, um, the key is the set of the two names. And we just pull out reactions. Now we've defined these. And now we need to define these phases. And so we essentially um, tell it that we these embed sort of the uh, assumptions about how we calculate um, thermochemistry and rates. And here we're defining an ideal gas with the spe gas species and the gas reactions. And we're defining an ideal surface with the surface species and the surface reactions. We're also defining the site concentration here. Once we've done that, we can define the individual domains, um, which these domains encode how system thermodynamic properties are calculated. Um, so constant TP is telling us that we want to form a domain where the temperature and pressure are constant. Um, we define our initial conditions, give it the temperature and the pressure, and then also the moles of each species that we're interested in. And we run that, and that will give us a domain, the initial condition for the domain, and the parameters for the domain. We do the same here for the surface, although this is a little bit, looks a little bit more complicated, and that's because we're enforcing a um, volume area ratio between the um, the gas phase, the volume of the gas phase versus the area of the surface of, with this value. Um, we also define the temperature and the area here, and we set basically we're essentially telling it that the surface is vacant, that all of the sites are are empty and don't have anything attached when the simulation starts, and then we define a constant TA phi domain that in the initial conditions and get much the same the domain the initial condition and the parameters then we define the interface um, this for this interface we just give it the domains involved in the interface and the interface reactions and since we're saying this is a constant temperature a potential domain we give it a temperature and then also the area of the, of the uh, interface we then combine these to, uh, to make the full system in this reactor call, um, where we give it the domains in order, um, initial conditions in the same order, the span of the time, the time span, um, the interface, and then the parameters in order from domains to um, interfaces. And this gives us a reactor object, a full initial condition, and a full set of parameters. Now this React object um, creates an ODE problem, which allows us to call differential equations.jl sol solve function and um, uh, essentially solve the ODE. And check that, this, that we were successful. So now we have this object, um, but this is kind of raw output. And so normally what you what's nice to have for users is to enable users to be able to just sort of make all the plots that they want. Um, relatively easily. And for this reason, we have system simulation. And also, if this was a single domain, you'd be using a simulation object. 
And what this allows you to do is take this solution object, combine it with a domain and interface information, and um, be able to use that information to make all the sorts of plots and pull the sort of information that you're interested in. So we create that object. And now we can take this and we can pull out the second domain and ask for the mole fractions there. So we can plot the surface fractions here. And as you can see here, we have the surface starts vacant and you have oxygen and then it gets filled with oxygen. And then as the reaction progresses, um, as the oxygen reacts away, um, you, it gets more vacant, it does, but it doesn't get quite vacant because the CO, there's still some CO2 on the surface. And here we can do the same thing for the gas phase mole fractions. Um, as you can see here, you can see the methane and oxygen that is um, reacting away on the surface to make um, H2O and CO2. And we can also look at specifically at rates of production for different species at um, specific times. What this tells us is essentially is that at this time, absorbed H2O is mostly being produced by this reaction between HOX, um, OH on, our, on absorbed to the surface reacts to form it, and then our, the primary loss for this is H2O desorbing into the gas phase. So now you've had a little bit of an introduction. Um, so now we'll talk um, sort of about some other similar software and how RMS compares. So chemical mechanism simulation is a very well-developed area. Um, the software for this, the original software, uh, ChemKit, was developed in the 1970s. Um, and Camterra, the prominent open, most, most prominent open source software in this area, was, has been developed since 2003. Um, Camterra is a C++ code. It's very well funded. Um, it has a, currently under a $2.5 million NSF grant. Um, ChemKin is a commercial software. Um, that has a GUI is pretty pretty well. It has a lot of users. It's widely used in the kinetics community and very well funded. So here's a little qualitative comparison um, in terms of what what these softwares are. So Cantera and RMS are open source. Chemkin's commercial. Um, Cantera is in C plus uh, plus. Chemkin and Fortran. RMS and Julia. Um, Chemkin has a GUI. Um, the other two, this open source softwares, do not. The, in terms of mechanism analysis tools, um, Cantera um, are very limited, um, whereas RMS and Chemkin both have a significant library of these. Although Chemkins um, have the advantage that they are in a GUI, but the disadvantage that they're a bit slow and difficult to it can be difficult to work with. In terms of scripting, um, all three of these softwares are it's possible to script them. Chemkin is particularly not designed for it and can be quite painful to work with. Uh, moving on to sort of talking a little bit more about numerical aspects here. Um, the, the integration problems are not, Cantera doesn't um, formulate them in a, in a sparse manner. Um, and whereas Chemkin and RMS use sparse formulations that allow you to have sparse matrices. Um, RMS uh, is the only one that is able to have uh, forward and reverse mode automatic differentiation through. Um, both Chemkin and RMS have analytic Jacobians. Cantera does not. Um, but RMS is the only one with symbolically generated Jacobians, which are, are handy because usually um, analytic Jacobians are relatively easy to write for single domain simulations, but they're um, kind of tricky, quite tricky to write when you have complicated systems. But modeling toolkit allows us in RMS to generate the symbolically generate a analytic Jacobian for those more complicated cases. Um, all three of these have implementations for forward sensitivities, although Chemkin has a particularly good implementation of this, um, as we'll talk about in a little bit. Um, RMS is the uh, only one that has um, adjoint sensitivities implemented. And RMS is the only one that has full solver, solver choice flexibility. Technically, you can plug in alternative solvers to Cantera, but it's a, it's a, it can be a complicated process, and you have to write the interface yourself. Um, both Cantera and Chemkin can do flames and RMS cannot. Um, and then also Cantera um, has a few non-ideal thermodynamic simulations. Um, RMS doesn't have that yet, um, but we're hoping to integrate OpenSaft uh, to introduce a whole bunch of these. Um, and OpenSaft is actually giving a talk um, here. So you should, you should go see their talk. Um, 
so now uh, we ran we ran benchmarks uh, using a 443 species and uh, 26,108 reaction propylmethyl ether combustion mechanism. Um, we did two case studies. The first is this constant temperature pressure um, here that denotes a flow tube simulation at 700 Kelvin and one bar. And this constant V is a stoichiometric ignition simulation here. You can see the ignition here at 700 Kelvin, 10 bar. Um, RMS is fastest for both of these benchmarks. Um, it beats Cantera by about factors of three and two respectively, and Chemkin by factors of about eight and 1.5 respectively. Um, in general, if we were to decrease the mechanism size, um, we would expect this performance advantage to increase um, in my experience. Um, however, this 443 is the size, is a more relevant size where you would care more about these um, simulation time. And also our focus on these sort of larger mechanisms um, makes this the best sort of case study for this. So a little aside about adjoint sensitivity analysis. Um, so adjoint sensitivity analysis, as opposed to forward sensitivity analysis, um, can give us the sensitivity of any species of thermodynamic variable to every parameter, as opposed to every state variable to every parameter in forward sensitivity analysis. Um, as a part of this, this causes it to scale much better. It scales with the number of parameters rather than with the number of species times the number of parameters. In addition, in kinetics, we're normally only interested in the sensitivity to a few important state variables to every parameter, which makes adjoint sensitivity analysis look very attractive. So compared to most implementations of forward sensitivity analysis that we've, we've looked at, including Cantera's, for constant TP cases, adjoint sensitivity is about 10 times faster, the scale of PME, um, that PME mechanism, 443 species. Um, and this is a uh, significant difference. This is the difference between getting sensitivities overnight and getting them a week later. Um, however, Chemkin's forward sensitivity analysis implementation is quite competitive with adjoint sensitivities, in fact, at the PME mechanism scale. So we're, we're still exploring speed improvements in this area. Um, some work we've done on, uh, particularly on improving forward sensitivity analysis. Um, it was we looked at sort of a parallelization and some other sort of ways to configure it. Um, the first sort of thing that we found was that it's fastest to do forward sensitivity analysis in these mechanisms for each parameter independently here, which you can see in this graph here. Um, that if we do one parameter at a time with the for forward sensitivity analysis, it's actually faster and costs less and involves less memory. Um, what we also found here, so this is, we also looked at using an interpolated version of the simulation um, with this forward sensitivity analysis instead of re-simulating the state variables each time, which is what these IFPSA is, um, whereas the SFSA is, is just doing it um, not interpolated, but with both with um, batch size of one. And we looked at parallelizing these analyses. We found that about a six fa times factor of improvement um, was observable just from using the interpolated version, and then an additional uh, seven factor of improvement from um, parallelizing the sensitivity analysis. So now let's talk about um, some of RMS's more unique tools. So um, we put a lot of effort into building a mechanism analysis toolkit. Um, in order to make users' lives easier and in general facilitate and make it easier to analyze these mechanisms that can be quite complicated and quite hard to deal with. Um, we have a library of functions for generating common plots of interest from these simulations, rates of production, sensitivities, um, radical rate of production, mole fraction profiles, and more. We also have an algorithm uh, for structure-specific flux diagram generation, um, which is very, very valuable and convenient. Um, and because this enables users to see the species as what they are instead of um, just as their names, as their chemical, see them as their chemical structures, which is really handy because when you have 443 species, it's really hard to keep 443 names straight. Additionally, we've been working on symbolic mechanism reduction. In many cases, um, if a mechanism is very large or embedded in cells of a higher dimensional simulation, it's not very convenient to simulate that entire mechanism. Um, and we'd like to reduce the mechanism. Now, a lot of the simple methods um, like directed relational graph, um, DRG, 
uh, that just removes species and reactions are relatively easy to implement in these sorts of situations. Um, and we're able to handle those algorithmically. However, lumping species together in quasi steady state approximations are much more complicated to apply. And oftentimes when you do these kinds of reductions, they don't fit in the original format of the mechanism. As a result, these reductions often need done by hand in a different format and are difficult to map back to the full mechanism. So in order to alleviate this, we've implemented an algorithm that generates a symbolic representation of the full simulation using modeling toolkit.jl. It then symbolically applies all given lumping and QSS assumptions while maintaining a symbolic map between the full model and the reduced model. This gives a symbolic reduced model and a map that are in an easy to evaluate modeling toolkit format. And in the future, we're hoping to fully automate this process by identifying candidates for lumping and QSS approximations automatically. So now it's worth talking a little bit about um, how are we able to do this and how are we able to build a software that's competitive with these very long-standing and well-funded codes. Cantera has a very long-standing developer community, has millions of dollars in grants. Kemkin's commercial, it's very widely used, um, well-funded. And we really just have Julia Siamel in the Julia community. And I think it's best to illustrate this with an example. Um, steady state solution identification. So at the US combustion meeting this year, the Cantera team presented a paper implementing a steady state solver for zero dimensional reactors in Cantera. And this paper described the implementation and testing of a nonlinear solver within Cantera to solve for the steady state solution to reaction systems. So naturally I looked at what it would take to do this inside RMS. In fact, this can be done in RMS without changing the code with a one line change from simulating the system. Um, instead of we switch out this line and instead of telling it to solve this differential equation system, we give it, we convert this to a steady state problem and we tell it to root find. We adjust, of course, we have to adjust the tolerance um, to, the, uh, to the solved tolerance. Now, to say this is all that needs done is maybe a little bit of an exaggeration. Of course, we want to write a little bit of downstream processing, um, although most of that's copy and paste um, from other objects. And truth be told, the raw output in sol the solution object isn't that different from typical Cantera outputs. Um, additionally, we may need to play a little bit with nonlinear, other nonlinear solvers that could, to feed to SS root find. Um, but in Julia, that's relatively easy because of the composability. And when considering all of this, and I think it's quite arguable that including and inclu even including running the testing simulations from the paper. Um, this work can be done relatively easily by an inexperienced Julia user, as long as they have familiar, familiarity with the application and some guidance in one or two days. And this sort of begs the question, why is this a paper worth of development in Cantera, a one to two day job in RMS? And the real fundamental reason of this is um, C++ is a much harder to learn and work in um, language than languages like Python and Julia. It takes a lot longer to train a student in order to learn C++ and then train them on your C++ software that's harder to work with and learn. And then they have to learn the, sol the solver um, C++ code or write their own solver C++ code and then set it all up and build it. And by the time you've done that, that's, that's, that's a whole considerable amount of time um, before you really started playing with it. Whereas with Julia, we get, as, you, as we saw on this last slide, we get quite, we get to playing with it and figuring out the numerics of this very, very quickly. Our, another huge advantage that we have here is that SciML already has so many of these packages like steady state DiffEQ that already implement the methods we need. And the differential equations interface also is a huge part of this. It makes it incredibly easy and flexible for us to just switch over to solving for the steady state solution. And in general, um, Julia's general composability also makes it super easy and quick to plug and play with a lot of these um, solve methods. So in conclusion, we presented RMS as a, a modern package for simulation of multi-domain chemical kinetic systems. We've demonstrated that simulations and sensitivity analysis in RMS are significantly faster or at least competitive within performance and established codes. Um, RMS implements a suite of tools for facilitating model analysis and also reduction and um, our nice integration with SciML makes it super easy to add new features.
like to acknowledge my fellow developers, Howei, who put a lot of effort into driving and coding up the analytic Jacobians, um, and also on the symbolic model reduction. Um, Mark Payne, who did a lot of the work on forward sensitivity analysis um, acceleration. Um, Jowry, and then also uh, Dr. Chris Rakakas, who gave us um, great advice, and my advisor, Professor Green, and the Green Group as a whole, and also funding from ARPA-E. Uh, thank you for your time.